Hello there, I'm Andrew Lindsay, passionate about paint. A discussion on football to come with Swampy and Alan and what football it is. First up though, it's interview time. This month we're joined by one of those classic defensive double acts. All the great United sides have had them. Bruce and Pallister in the 90s, Chaddy and Nugent in the early FC years. And who could forget Alan Keegan's rapport with Jim Davidson in that home game against Charlton when I was in the United Road End for reasons I can't remember. <laughs> who could forget that, everyone? It's possible that these two top the lot, though, if only for the fact that they sound like the founders of a mustard company. It's Waglin and Davis, Charlie Waglin and Tom Davis. Wild applause. Please. Welcome to the settee of self-aggrandisement. Uh, going top, then, let's start with that. What a feeling that must have been. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously, great feeling uh, with what's been the, the results recently with Charlie dropping off a bit and ourselves winning 10 on the spin. I um, think three more wins and we've got a record. So uh, it's obviously down to all the team. Uh, had some great performances and I don't fancy ourselves not to drop any more points at the end of the season. So it's looking good. I mean, scoring five at Witten and you chipped in with quite a few goals as well, as well lately. I well, mean, what was it saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for you. But then uh, you, you talked about Charlie there. But do you think you rattled him? Do you think you rattled him in the ninety-third minute? Yeah. Up there. Yeah, it seems to be that way, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, they were obviously very well organised sort of thing. They're a, a good team. Um, but the greasy goal in the last minute—it's obviously not the stuffing out of them. So um, yeah, we've got to kick on. We've got to treat every game sounds cliche as it comes. And if we keep on winning, then we're going to win the league. So. I'm yeah. sure we'll carry on doing that. You can't think about the 10 just gone, but you also have to sort of think about avoiding the playoffs really, don't you? You have to really put your eyes on that top spot. Or do you? Do you just genuinely think about the next game? I think we have to. I think we've, all, we've, we've done that. I mean, two months ago, was it? We were 19 points away. So at the time, we couldn't really think about winning the lead or getting promoted. We just had to try and get back on track, uh, which we have done. Everyone's pulling together. And now we've got our rewards. I say rewards, we've not achieved anything yet. We have to keep going. So and that's all we do. We just got what is it, eight games. We said it about four games ago, then we just mm. got a cup final, so I've never been involved in as many cup finals. <laughs> <laughs> no, never again. But um we had Spenner on exactly where you're sitting last month and he said, I think this team is hitting form at exactly the right time. You I didn't predict sort of ten on the spin in the league, but he was he was sort of thinking you know that could almost happen. You could tell he was itching to get back, back in. But I mean, the spirit now in the squad must be just ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's, it's a class dressing room to be in at the moment. Obviously, um, we've had our darker moments when we've not been winning or we've uh, been dropping points. But we're flying. Everyone's flying. Strikers. Everyone. Uh, whoever's in the team's doing well. Uh, you've seen people coming in and going out, and everyone's like doing the bit. So um, I don't see any reason why we can't pick up maximum points from every game and I don't see any reason why uh, we can't w uh, win this league. Yeah, it's going to be really tight though isn't it, and I mean it is really tight now, the twists and turns as well to come, you, you know that, it's very unlikely you sort of win yeah. eight, 18 on the spin. That's what I mean, yeah, I mean that's half a season winning, yeah. so it's, if you said that at the start it's unlikely but the way we're going, we're confident like Tom said, the lads, they're all doing a bit and there's no you know, we go into games feeling we're not going to get beat and we're going to win. Um, that's not arrogance, it's just the way we, we are at the minute. And I, like, you know, I can't see any reason why we can't go on and finish it off. Um, but we'd like, you know, the police say does go, we've just got to take every game as it comes. Let's talk about you two personally then. We should offer you congratulations and join your Fleetwood and you could be playing third tier football next season. That, that, that's really a case of your perseverance paying off, I suppose. Uh, yeah, uh, it's obviously great on a personal note. Uh, I don't think it'll be long before he's somewhere higher up the pyramid either. And um, yeah, it's obviously great for us both uh, having a great season personally. But um, the team is obviously the gaffer. Uh, the people around the club have helped us out massively. Um, everyone at the office who I've ever been to see has just helped me out um, looking for work or with advice here and there. And it sounds like the right thing to say but everyone has helped me out massively and uh, he'll, he'll back me up in saying that the gap has been top notch trying to sort us out and uh, yeah so there's no reason why anyone coming to this club can't like, kick on and end up higher uh, and I think ourselves and uh, Ollie Banks are just the, just the examples of that in just this season so um, yeah I just thanking everyone at the club is like the minimum that I can do because they have uh, given me the opportunity and the platform to go on and do what I'm doing next year. 
Yeah, and I guess that you just want to follow that, wouldn't you? I mean, you're very, very similar age. I think by the time this goes out, you'll have celebrated another birthday. I don't know. Another month. <laughs> well, it'd probably take that long to edit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you are, you are, I mean, you're very similar age and stuff. Yeah, I'm, you, yeah, you, I'm nearly 21. Yeah. yeah, and you would think that... You, I don't know, it's, I hope so. That's a dream, yeah. It's what we play football for, what we work for, so... I've got to set, you know, that's what we strive for, and Tom's achieved that now, and he'll uh, obviously get his taste of professional football, and it's an opportunity to, to do something brilliant. Um, and, yeah, if I can somehow get back into that game, then it'll be something I'll embrace. And if you are if you are to do that, will you be able to pop up and score goals in the same way, or will you need Liam Brownhill, two-footed like Bobby Charlton, but with hair? <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I, don't, I don't know, yeah, it's... I, I've saved all my goals for the last five games, so I don't know what's happened really. <laughs> when the news came in that you'd got that, was it everyone? Was everyone really behind you in terms of the players, or was it a bit like one of those um, trying to remember the film where you get battered by some soap in a, a, a one of the pillowcase holder? <laughs> yeah, well, everyone's supposed to be Fleetwood now, so I've got no no time for Fleetwood. So uh, yeah, I get a bit of stick off the lads, but uh, I know that I'm, well, I'm sure they're all buzzing for me, and well, they are. yeah, yeah, and. Uh, just shows that if lads like Brownie, uh, who obviously have been unbelievable this season, so consistent, Charlie and a few of the others, that, uh, they can do it and that's that's what everyone wants, so um, yeah, they've, they've been great. Regular viewer Russell, who um, <laughs> FC United fans will know from the game for looking like Adam Crozier and Trevor the Scot from EastEnders who got burnt with an iron. Uh, he, he's compared your partnership to Dolly and Daisy to Palestine and Bruce. I mean, uh, I'll not ask you about that, but... Uh, no, I will. Which one of you would have um, Bruce's nose if that were the case? I nearly had his teeth after the <laughs> After the uh, But always looked knackered, didn't he? So that probably me. He did have your haircut early on as well, so we'll go with that. You'll have to be Bruce then. So, great career in management, mind up. Well, um, what, do you support the general sort of centre back partnerships? Is that something you work on a lot, or, or what about three at the back? It's a strange, oh, it's a strange one, really, because I uh, got asked this a few weeks ago uh, at the Stockport branch meeting. Little plug. Um, it was. Uh, <laughs> I swear I got all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we were asked what we prefer the two at the back or the three at the back, and um, what whatever we played, I think the team's done well. Not not just those two, but uh, as a back three or a back four. Um, leaked. We, we've actually been all right recently. Had, had a few clean sheets, but um, earlier on in the season we leaked a few goals and uh, tightened up a bit going to three at the back. So. Whether that means we, we play as a two or a three, we're happy. We're happy on the pitch, I think. So, I've never really worked on anything, have we? It's just sort of clicked in yeah. terms of me and Tom when we play together. Um, and then the three at the back, I think we've got the players to do that in terms of the full backs and the midfield players we've got. Um, and also, I know that gets um, Tom Greaves and Mike, Tom, Gre Tom Greaves and Mike Norton together, which I know the fans were probably wanting yeah, early yeah. on in the season. Um, although we still got results. and. I don't know, I mean, obviously 10 on the bounce speed for itself, so yeah. it's been a success. I mean, you need to understand him, wouldn't you, straight away, or else you'd end up balling at each other, but I mean, when he goes, what kind of man are you looking for? Because, you know, you still want to get up there and, and pop the odd goal in, won't you? <laughs> when he goes, where? Hmm? When he goes? Yeah. To Fleetwood? Hmm. He'll be gone as well, but uh, yeah, I'll point Yeah. I'll still be, I'll still be amazing for yeah. <laughs> well, uh, has anyone, uh, has anyone um, sort of put themselves forward for any dares or said they'll do any stupid pranks if you top the league? We've had none as yet. As yet. Why? Are you? No, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Are you offering yeah. yourself? Yeah. No, I'm not. But I think, I think someone should volunteer. Or do you want to volunteer someone live on here? Uh, and we'll call it live for the purposes of telling lies. Um, do you want to volunteer someone to do? I don't know. Jump in a fountain. Uh, a naked, naked street round gig. I think Swampy's put his name forward for that. So, uh, <laughs> good jobs are good. <laughs> but, uh, we want to increase the crowd. Yeah, increase the crowd. Yeah. So, but I mean, it would be it'd be a great way for you to leave. If that was a, if, if you could if you could leave on promotion, that'd be tremendous. Yeah, that that's all that I'm looking at at the moment. Really, uh, obviously, I'm there training at the moment, but I'm playing for us on a Saturday and a Tuesday. So, um, we've got eight games left, so we need to win them. Go up as champions, and then that'll be a, a great uh, note to leave it on. And then going to to Zurich up there, be an enjoyable trip, I'm sure. Brilliant. Really appreciate you coming in, lads. I think you've got about four minutes left on your car. So <laughs> that's absolutely brilliant. 
and uh, you can get yourself off to training. So thanks to the lads there for coming in there. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Very shortly, chat about games of non-league football with Swampy and Alan Hargrave. And a serious talk with board member Kate Ramsey on all things International Women's Day. Before that though, time to head back to Moston for our ongoing series of DIY SOS SOZ. And as the next nine minutes will demonstrate, things have really <laughs> taken a turn for the worse in our very own field of dreams up in North Manchester. It will appear that somebody has started to build a stand of their own on the very same site that FC United were supposed to be building their new stadium in Moston. Leaving us all to wonder whether this is a new tactic by the No campaign. Here's our Moston correspondent, Dr K, on this very serious matter. Well, it's the 14th of March, it's about a month since we were here last time and as you can see, the stand is taking shape, it's very exciting. Um, the guys there are bolting things together, different bits of steel, like a giant Meccano set. Well, here we are, I'm standing in the centre of the pitch now and it is definitely not as muddy as it used to be. Yeah, my name's Matt Pillen, I'm the project engineer for Thomas Barnes. Okay. My name's Stephen Coulson, I'm Matt's assistant. Right, okay. And I mean, we were here last a month ago and it looks, it's just incredible, the change. Can you tell us what's happened with this construction? It's beautiful. Yeah, well, first of all, it's stopped raining. Yeah. Um, we've had all the months in the rain, but uh, now obviously something's come out of the ground. Uh, we're coming through at the moment with the structural steel, which is followed behind by the terrace, terrace in. Um, we're basically working our way up the south stand. Um, until we get to the end, and it's, uh, as you can see, it's progressing well. You can see it actually taking shape, can't yeah. you? It's exciting for a fan. It's dead exciting. Yeah, well, I think when we go up on the top to do some checks, I think if some of the fans could see the view we get of the pitch up there, I think they'd be really excited about it. Yeah. yeah so coming on well. So how long will it take to finish off the south stand? Uh, it'll be about another three weeks on the south stand, um, and then we're going to progress separately up the north stand, across the west stand, and then independently we've got. Uh, another company coming in called Stadco we are going to do the East Stand. Right, okay. So that'll be the last on the list. So when will it all be finished? Um, um, we're three months? Or? The end of next football season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. And so Steve, your job is assistant? Um, yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, an, an engineer's got a lot to do. Um, so anything that, that I can do, which frees Matt's time up a bit, uh, I'd do that. and. Um, th there's a lot of things that requires two people to do, uh, so Matt's been training me up, and so we're getting there. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I am. Very yeah. Much so yeah. Have you done work like this before? Uh, yeah, I've worked on quite a lot of construction sites, um, like your cameraman said there, the town hall and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And uh, we've I only live down the road as well, so it's it's an easy commute to work. Yeah. I'm really so, excited about the project. Yeah. We get people coming and asking questions a lot. Uh, there's been a lot of people taking photographs and recording as the structure's been going up. Um, a few people uh, commenting on our great erection. So, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, uh, every, everyone seems really chuffed that it's going ahead and that um, it'll be ready on time. So. Does it seem more than usual when you're building? More people interested? Yeah, that yeah, you get normally. That, yeah, that that is true. Yeah, um, I think th there's been a lot of um, controversy, I think, over the build, um, but the, like for and against sort of things. Um, but it will be a great a great asset to the community uh, for for the young people as well, um, for the local football teams and for FC United. It'll be a great great thing. No matter who you support, which football team you support, it's good for the community. Yeah, because you were saying earlier that a lot of people in construction are towards the older end. Not necessarily in general construction, but engineering terms, about 75% of all engineers in this country are aged over 50. Right. And as they go on to retirement, there's going to be a skill shortage. So for young people like Stephen to get involved in it, go on and get the education, I mean, otherwise it's all going to come to a standstill. Yeah. Are you a football fan? I am, yeah. I, uh, I'm a Manchester City supporter. <laughs> OK. But uh, I have a lot of friends who are FC United fans, so I'll definitely be coming to the games. Oh, very good. So, are you a football fan, Matt? I, I am. I'm a Wolves fan. Right. Ever since. It's a hard life, but, you know, 
<laughs> Are they doing any good? At the top of League One this season, but two years ago they were in the Premier League, so it's a big drop down. Right. Might be playing you soon. Where the drawings were. So that corner there yeah. is this corner yeah. there. So that's that's the stairs yeah. going up into the the, uh, the main room upstairs. Yeah. Um, but the terrace. I'm Dave Payne. I'm the project manager for FC United. Right. And so, what does that involve? Um, everything and every anything really to get the ground built to the required uh, quality standards on time and within budget. Um, I work very closely with Andy Walsh, assisting him with anything that needs doing to get the ground up and running really. So how's it going so far? Good, Yeah. we're alright. I think we're, uh, we're now week 17 into a 45 week build and we, we are on timetable, we're still within our budget and the quality so far is, is is too standard, so you know you can't say fair in that. So far, so good. Yeah, I mean, coming here today and seeing this, when you can see the terraces taking shape, it looks looks really good. It's really exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. As a as a fan, I'm just so excited to come here in August, September. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be great, isn't it? It's gonna yeah, be great. Yeah. So you're an FC United fan? Yeah, I've been involved since day one I was at the Apollo meetings the early Apollo meetings and right. all the subsequent ones I joined from the off yeah and in, in a former life I used to uh, work for Manchester City Council as a planning officer and uh, part of my role was well my role was a regeneration officer and part of it involved looking helping the club to look for a site because the council had been heavily involved since day one so I was involved in the early searches for land and um, the Newton Heath site mm. and um, I, I left the council subsequently and now I'm, I'm with FC United. Yeah, yeah. It's a labour of love. <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing isn't it, if you do something you really enjoy and your heart's in it, yeah. it's a good I'll, life. I look forward to doing whatever I've got to do every morning I get up, it's yeah. really exciting. Yeah. So can you tell us about what's going to go here? Well this is the main stand Yeah. and then uh, that's, that's south and we've got the north stand over there, they're starting work on that next week. And that's going to be our east stand, that's St Mary's Road. <coughs> that's um, been remodelled from the old um, Northwich Fix stand, which uh, they had their troubles and gone out of business. Um, we uh, were quite fortunate in that we managed to do a deal with the company who bought the, the land and the stadium <coughs> and uh, a friend of the club uh, who has an engineering business up in Lancaster has uh, offered to and is uh, remodelling the stand, reconfiguring it to fit our plans and um, it wasn't far off to be honest, we were quite lucky Yeah. Uh, and he's currently doing that up in Lancaster now. So then this is the main stand, so can yep. you tell us about that? The main stand, it reminds me a little bit of the old main stand at Old Trafford in that has a tennis paddock at the front, yeah. which would be fantastic, and then seating behind it for those who prefer the more sedate football experience. Yeah. Tunnel in the middle, um, I, I think that stand will be will be fantastic, I think we've, we've done a good job designing that. And then behind that is will be the function room with its glazing across the middle yeah. and functions will be able to look out over the stadium right, which will right, be okay. quite yeah. a nice vista. Yeah. And then what about over there? East stand, there are no names for the stands yet. Yeah. Uh, that's, that'll be another process we'll go through within the club. The, those two stands are smaller stands. Uh, that's all we could afford within our budget. Yeah. But they'll be okay, they'll be fit for purpose. Um, and we'll have to see what, what the future develops on those stands. But that's starting again next week, the foundation's starting next week. So, uh, And they reckon they'll be out of the ground within two weeks. Now the ground means all the foundations are finished and we can start putting the steel work in. Yeah. They're a lot smaller those two stands so they'll yeah. be quicker than, than the main stand. Yeah. So come back next month, yeah. you might see a bit more shape bit, to the whole thing. You know this business about the suspended water table pitch or what, it, whatever, that was the wrong name wasn't it? We're trying to do the best design, ha, trying to get the best design pitch for the budget we have available. We've got £76,000 for the pitch itself and we've been through a, a long long process of going through several designs we have a, a, a professional pitch consultant who's advising us and we, I think we've been through about three or four designs um, and at the moment we have the opportunity to acquire some 
uh, what I'm informed is much better growing and draining soil from uh, a Premier League club who are stripping theirs this summer. So we're looking into that this week. We're, I was speaking to him this morning. We're currently looking into that. Kind of changes every yeah. week. And we've got till May. Oh no, so yeah, we've got till April to make our decision. So we've got about a month left. But opportunities keep arising as we, as our pitch controller and us talk to other. Uh, sporting establishments and, and things come our way so yeah. we haven't got a decision on it as yet but right. very good but we're, we're really conscious and that's why we spend a lot of time and effort on it that we've got to get the best best pitch because of all the games we've had postponed yeah. you know, since since October it's been shocking hasn't it yeah. so yeah. We, last thing we want is to come here and get in postponement so yeah. we're working really hard on that and yeah. fingers crossed we've got good people around us advising us Um the guy who the firm who will do the actual work are local they're committed to to, to the project mm. so fingers crossed we'll get the best deal yeah. for, the, for, the club, for the club yeah great thank you Kay there from Moston and during that piece we were largely talking about archaeoptics now before we go all inevitable and review the action from the pitch in the month that was March FC United were also busy with events off the pitch uh, celebrating the, that says menace on there, but I don't think it was a menace of the National <laughs> Women's Day. It was, of course, entitled A Woman's Place is at the Match. Uh, to find out more on this now annual event, please welcome a debutante to the Couch of Culture, a uh, board member and women's team secretary, Kate. And now, Kate, I want to talk to you for, I'm, oh, so we make room for Neil as well. <laughs> that, right, let's just say that same, before, before we talk to Kate Ramsey, that the idea was that Neil would come in after a few, a few like, minutes, after we had a few minutes with Kate. But uh, it sounded like the weirdest thing since Swampy turned up in a bird outfit. So I think we can bring them both in together, but just ignore you for the first two that's, minutes. Is that all right? That's what we do as well. Harsh. So women's place is, uh, women's place of the match. How, how has it grown in the time that you've been involved with it in the last year or so? Uh, this year was the third year we've done it. And it's the first time I've actually been involved in organising it. It's a bit of a learning curve for me, doing things the FZ way. Um, first year was before the launch of the women's team and it very much focused on the role of women in the club so the film was about um, female physio, club secretary, different roles, volunteers that we had within the club. Uh, on the back of that we then launched the women's team which we're going to talk about in a bit. So the second year focused on setting up a women's team, what we did with them, a bit more stuff on the pitch um, and a film about the players. So this year we sort of widened it up a bit so that it was more about women in sport and we really wanted to try and get other clubs, other sports and um, raise the profile of women's roles not just on the football pitch or in the football team but generally in, um, in sport and activities so that was the plan this year, just to widen it up a bit. How's it worked, do you think? I mean, the, you have to say the women's team have been largely very successful you know, very successful most weeks do you think it's, has it worked to the extent that you wanted and hoped? I think it's strongly associated with the women's team obviously but it's almost an event in its own right mm. um, in that the women's team plays a trail for what we're doing with women in football but the wider issues about women in sport and getting into getting girls and women into sport and, and, and getting involved in the running of sport and, and, and lifestyle um, that's really where we're going with a lot of the off-pitch stuff so the women's team are part of that but the women's place at, is at the match really is a bigger event and it allows us to start doing things like getting members involved who are involved in other sports, getting taster sessions. And we had a really good discussion, a uh, panel discussion, with women representatives from different parts of sport, from journalism, uh, from different clubs. So it, it, it's taking it to that next step around the women's team who are successful, mm. but doing other stuff as well. I mean, I bet you're right in Onslow, he looks like Onslow from Keeping Up Appearances, got <laughs> stick, that's why they call him that. Uh, I mean, he brings his missus and his sister to every FC game home and away, and the thing is that they are probably people who wouldn't have been to football ordinarily, so is that important even more so at this level, do you think? Yeah, I think it is, and I think the, the thing that you can do with the women's team is you can use them in a different way to the men's team to access community, to engage, to get kids, male and female, in, um, to make the club feel more family and um, to give it a different feel about um, what's on offer for children in sport um, to be able to have a hook to get kids in not just to the matches but into other things that we plan to do mm. and the next phase of that course is going to be moving into Moston and having a physical community and base where we can really start to do those things much more within the community. 
What about you going to the match and the sort of attitude towards women board members at non-league level? Have you had any incidents? Uh, I have to say I haven't. I know people who have. Um, yeah. Maybe it's because people don't dare take me on, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you do think sometimes the, the, um, the attitude within some non-league clubs and some towns or villages is a little bit, shall we say, traditional. And when I say traditional, I mean in the sense of Terry and June and uh, golf club racism. <laughs> How do I answer that? <laughs> Slowly and carefully. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, have you found people welcoming or do they just not talk to you? Uh, I find people are welcoming. I know other people have had too traditional an approach. I know people will still um, have somebody in a suit and tie come up and expect to be able to give the little lady a kiss on the cheek and say, you're right, sweetheart, um, which doesn't go down too well. I've never had it, um, but then I don't really look like a sweet heart, so they think I'm up and I shake their hand and that's fine. Um, I, th I think it's, there are certain clubs that are still much more traditional than others. We're a progressive club, we like to treat people the way that we do. Others value the traditions that they have had uh, and are a little bit more entrenched in them. So when you get a, an invitation to a pre-match dinner where you are required to wear a shirt and tie to go into the boardroom, mm. that causes a lot of problems. Okay, let's talk about certain examples in a wider sense then. I mean, Manchester City have taken a sledgehammer to the, to the professional women's game uh, in terms of uh, the players they've signed and putting money into it. Manchester United don't have a women's team. So when we talk about role models, is it important that teams get their act together at that level? It is, and those two clubs are setting very different examples for girls in Manchester in particular. Uh, City are buying an international team and putting them in, in Manchester, uh, which is great for Manchester, it's great for City, it's great for girls who aspire to that model, so it is of value in its own way. United aren't doing any of those things, but they are still working with girls' academies. There are changes coming at United, we're pretty sure there's lots of things that we we're hearing might change. Um, and although they haven't got an open age team, the first time they're actually reviewing the fact that they haven't, which is progress. And I don't think that they can bow, not bow to the pressure to actually put a, a women's team in eventually. That will give good choice for girls if they have two centres of excellence in Manchester to be able to choose between which team they, they, they can go and play for, because the only route to playing at the top level is through a centre of excellence. But those are only one part. Not all girls are going to be elite players. And what we're really focused on here is getting the girls through from grassroots level, getting local girls playing, and they might only play at community level. But out of those, you'll get the good ones who have roots through. And it's about, again, it's about choice. It's about finding different ways for girls to get into sport. And that is a good place to bring you out of hibernation, Neil, because there's always that <coughs> choice. And if Manchester oh. United do that, you end up... FC against Manchester United is a sort of regular fixture in the women's game. Well, we've already played City. Um, we beat them in the first ever game and they, they got their own back, unfortunately, a couple of times after that. But, um, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's something that might might come uh, at some point and we're just going to have to stand on our own two feet like we like we do as a, a club anyway. I think we, we're, we're big enough to do that, even though the girls' team, women's team, is only youngish at the moment. It's, uh, it's already fairly mature in the some of the players have been around for a few years. Some of them have played in these academies that Kate was mentioning already. And they're, they're used to each other. So there's about three or four who already know each other who come through together. It's a shame we've lost a few to, to university, but you know they already know each other and they know some of the system already. So some of them have already benefited from other teams, uh, youth academies and systems. Lost a few to university and one to the United Arab Emirates, of course, and yes. the airlines. Uh, can't let a month go by without mentioning Fran Davis, it's in the contract. Mm -hmm. um, and also lost players to other higher level clubs as well. Which is so what you're saying about that. Development the, opportunities yes, as we've just had yeah. with the boys. We've mm -hmm. had Claire to Crew, we have Gail to Blackburn, yes, um, and we are being contacted on a weekly basis by international teams who are looking to scout girls. Um, you know, they're, they're very interested, and we've got a good international profile. So, mm -hmm. in terms of opportunities for the girls coming through, some will stay with us, some will play, some will mentor other girls, and some will move on. It's about finding what's right for those girls and giving them a choice. No, it didn't exist before, did it? So if, yeah. if you build it, they will come kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so let's talk about the last few weeks and uh, the results there, because when you wallop teams, you know, you're used to walloping teams on a weekly basis, so the odd defeat can hurt, can't it? Yes, well, the uh, Middleton Athletic game was uh, a bit of a kick in the teeth. It closed the door on the league for us, unfortunately. 
and there's no way we can do anything about that. But we've got two chances to get back at them in the in the two cups. That I think we will probably play them in the final. I think the, the draws the up, draws yeah. now been done, hasn't yeah. it? So oh, we can nice now one. we can now if, if everyone plays to the potential, we should play Milton in both of those cups. Brilliant! What a refreshing change, Neil Boothman, Kate Ramsey. Thank you very much. Excellent. <laughs> now a very unusual occurrence, an advert. I'm excited, I can't even begin to tell you. I've had butterflies since they announced it. <laughs> uh, we, got, we got up very early and did the normal things, had breakfast, got dressed obviously, and then just when I was coming down the stairs to go out, it just hit me where we were going and what we were going to do. And it's just like, oh my God, oh my God, drive fast, drive fast, drive fast quickly. Tremendous, tremendous for everybody that's contributed, tremendous for everybody that's worked on it. Everybody that's come to put money in the barrels bought a ticket, been to a do, bought a pie. It's going to be brilliant, a fabulous sight. The, the whole area is just fantastic. It just so deserves a really, really good facility. And it's going to be here in a year's time. Great. FC United of Manchester is a community football club owned entirely by its members. One member, one vote. Everyone is equal. In 2009, the club was honoured with Cooperative UK's Excellence Award for its cutting-edge work with local communities. We have ongoing projects with local schools, colleges, businesses and community groups. We are a not-for-profit organisation. We are ambitious and democratic. Having achieved successes both on and off the pitch in our early years, in the summer of 2014, FC United will be moving into a new home in Moston, North Manchester. And you can be involved too. People seem to have forgotten that football is a game. And a game that's supported, a game that's followed, and a game that's largely financed by the people that are gathered here, by football fans. Today, we are asking for your help. Work has begun on our new home. The dream is becoming a reality. With over 3,000 members already, we seek to change the way that football is owned and run by putting supporters at the heart of everything. Join FC United today, or simply donate to the cause if you can. Join us and be a part of something very special. Team football chap then. Swampy is here and so is makeup wearing lovely Alan Hargrave. <laughs> uh, from the board, hello both. Hello, hello. Mild applause rather than wild. Just in the <clears> there. <throat> uh, well the month began as it was to go on then. A 4-1 thumping of already relegated Droylston. Uh, I thought the commentary was great in that match. Uh, the rest of it was good. I thought, actually, in fairness, uh, the game was excellent. The commentary is a little bit predictable, a little bit clichéd, a bit Alan Partridge for my liking. That's the television commentary, mind you. Yeah. Although I thought Sam was superb. I was going to say, I'll pass that on to Sam. Um, <laughs> so he was very good. No, I mean, to be honest, I mean, the, a team like Drawsden, you know, you have a job to do there. And uh, I think we did it. They, uh, on the day, acquitted themselves well, I thought. I thought uh, Luke Sharry, centre midfield, was the yeah. player of the game. Yeah, I did as well. It was absolutely yeah. tremendous. Uh, Several clubs have come in after for him since. Uh, I've seen him quite a few times this year, and he, he he blows hot and cold throughout a game, but he always does something of quality. And um, he he was a standout player out of all players on the pitch yeah, afternoon. Um, but again, you know, he, it's very hard to come and play a team like Drawsden where you know they're on a hiding to nothing. And uh, to be know. honest, there was more concern I think for the Drawsden game than there is for some of the other ones because the word Durham kept springing to mind yeah, for everybody yeah. and the only victory that, well, I think they had two that season uh, and yeah. the first one and we didn't think it'd go that way but I think it focuses the minds and the players, doesn't it? I think, but, I mean, yeah. a lot of the, the vast majority of those players that played in that Durham game weren't really, weren't really on show on, there's yeah. a few of them that were on show against uh, against uh, Drawsden and there's a bit more professionalism there within, I think, the way the team are, are performing at the moment and there was no way they were going to ever lose that game against Drawsden, the preparation was good the focus was there. Uh, I know um, there was there was situations within the game that Carl wasn't happy with, and quite rightly, you know, uh, you've got to set your stall out in the right manner. And there was for Carl, I know he made a couple of substitutions, uh, didn't he? And uh, did. he uh, he wasn't happy with the overall performance. But as I said, and and Carl will be 
probably mirroring this, it's it's about the results opposed to necessarily the performance of the stage of the season. If you can marry the marry the, marry the two, mm. fantastic. Um, so you know uh, we went we beat them four one. Um, you know and uh, you know we're quite lucky because you know Witten three weeks later we're beaten by them. You know so in that respect we did our job, and uh, you know that's all we've got to do at the end of the day. And it happened game after game after game since. So let's go to Chorley then. Chorley, well, I mean, key, mo key moment in the season. Well, no, a couple of key moments in the season. One of them away was filed a while back. I think that's. Uh, I think we went there and and really did filed. And uh, I know it was a long time ago, but at, at that stage, I think it showed everybody what they could do. But the capability yeah. of the team was there. The the galvanised, obviously down to ten men. You know, a spinner. Uh, we know what's happened to him since, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and North's going in nets, but uh, uh, we had a couple of blips after that, but mm. I think what you've seen in, in this, this run is the galvanisation, um, the playing some good quality football, and going back to the Chorley game itself, um, it was, I thought it was a terrific game of football, I thought for the, for the purest, it was, it was great, I mean, it was the story of two defences, uh, Keel O'Brien and, um, and, and Sean Teague, uh, magnificent Keel O'Brien, especially making Probably about five or six last ditch uh, uh, attempts yeah. to get the ball Very in. Ah, yes, I believe so. Mm. Uh, in championship football on the computer. <laughs> on the computer yeah. yeah. Um, and, and equally from FC United's perspective, Davis and Raglin playing superbly well. But it was it was a great. I thought it was a really really good game. Really enjoyed it. Would have been happy with a with a with a point. Uh, you know, but we go and score that goal in the ninety third minute, and it is it's excellent because you know we were commentating that that that, that evening um, amongst. A group of fans, shall we say that, don't often go because it was all the plush seats and they were full to brimming and with about six minutes to go they were all, I think we'll leave now and I'm thinking, why are they leaving? Because said, something could happen here. And when we scored the goal, you know, we, we, we really sort of gave the FC United radio treatment and uh, it was, uh, we're barred from there now. Uh, <laughs> no, no, actually, they're a good set uh, and uh, it, was, it was a great, great result. I think also, again, the players after it really buzzed up. I was stunned that there was plush seats in Chorley. <laughs> I must have missed that part of the ground. Yeah, uh, the, the cakes. The cakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eccles cakes, yeah. He is truly as well. Yeah, the, the players were really buzzing after it again. And, uh, will they crumble? That's... Because the thing is, they well, might be. The cakes. The cakes, will the yeah. cakes crumble? Will truly be like the namesake cakes crumbling now? Well, the question I'm asking you is, asked, you will asked it be a worse trip to gig lane for the moment? You asked the play. you, you asked. Uh, uh, centre back pairing that question earlier, and I think if I was Charlie, I'd be I'd be using that to say you know they think well, we're gone. Nobody's gone yet. I think that uh, there's, there's points to be dropped, and and they have said you know every match is is like a cup final. It is a bit of a cliche, but I, I think it could be a state that Charlie could be coming with not that much to lose. The well, pressure could be on us now. Keel, Keel O'Brien is now. Uh, suspended, he'll be back for the FC United game, which is a big miss for them. I went to watch them last night against Ashton United, and uh, about a week ago, that game, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, well, I thought, yeah, due to his problem not being uh, quick enough, um, but uh, we've got some savvy fans, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, they were uh, Ashton United was, was superb, certainly, second half, it was a really good game of football. They, they thought that they, they could beat that which 5 1 surely, you know, the weekend uh, or that weekend. And um, they thought they were back on track, but last night, that, that game, that, so they played against Ashton, um, they came a cropper and uh, they had a bit of a brick wall. And um, for me. They brought in a new defender, haven't they, today? So maybe they tried to lag. Well, that depends on when we're talking about, because today, actually, when this. Oh, right, 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 yeah. Not so, today, they're going to bring one in next they're week. They're bringing one in somewhere. Yeah, they bring, they're bringing yeah. a defender in next uh, week. They know yeah. they need to, because that will cover Keelan yeah, Bryan yeah, for those three yeah, games. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think there's anything to fear from the If you're day. watching this in 2015, this all happened. <laughs> but to talk about Pat Chorley, one of the other things was that Mike Norton's work rate. We talked about it last month about how important it was. And then he scored that goal against Kings Lynn, which uh, has, I think, now more than 15 billion views on the web. And the insistence <laughs> in uh, North Korea that all women have to adopt <laughs> Norton's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I've not seen it, have you? No, did you see no, that? I didn't see it. It was interesting because um, when the ball came across, we were in radio commentary again, and I just took the headset off and actually shout, shouted him, shoot, shoot, but the, the camera uh, guy You're claiming behind, an assist on I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course he am. But equally, the, the guy who was taking the photographs from behind went, 
The wise says he's still in. So he heard him say it, and I started screaming at him, shoot, shoot, and he did. And he actually came over to us and said, by the way, I did hear you. And that's why I was hesitant, because he thought he was going to get a yellow card. Yeah, he you know, thought he, he was going to actually he, get booked for time wasting. And, uh, yes. Yeah. Go of the season, let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, fair dues to him for being sharp like that and actually thinking, uh, you know, still keeping on it. And sharp or just belligerent? Just belligerent. Could Basically be, a good yeah. listener. Yeah. That's what he yeah. was. He was yeah. a good listener and he yeah. did yeah. what he was told. Yeah. So, but you better be careful in future yeah. commentaries then if all his goals are down to well, you. Well, we were all because looking around. <laughs> <and he's laughs> as well, and every yeah. time he gets sent off, yeah. Michael yeah. Norton doesn't make mistakes. Okay. Okay. I mean, the, the ref, again, it shows to play to the whistle, isn't it? Because I'm, I'm not 100% sure the ref knew. He was looking and then he saw the linesman running back. And at that point, that's when that's when it, you know game over. I wondered if Margie had been adopting Don Reeves' old tricks and leaving sweets in the locker. Room. Well, the thing is, that was interesting because the referee actually pointed to the uh, to, to goal for, for yeah. goal kick, yeah. and then again assessed what had happened, looked across, and the goals given. And they they remonstrated, and you know you can understand the reasons why because it did look, for all intents and purposes, that he was pointing to the for the goal kick. But you play to the whistle. If you don't blow that whistle, you know you, you put the ball in the back of the net, and then see what happens. Well, we saw what happened. And he got another one on ninety. I mean, that was a sort of um, a, a, a sort of not a, a really elegant game. It was a sort of result that was ground out, ground out. But then Kings Lynn four nil thump. Kings Lynn, yeah. Um, again, a team that uh, promised so much this season, and uh, they're, they're now re regroup and uh, Stafford Staff Rangers. I'm on about. Sorry. So about Stafford Rangers. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, well, Stafford Rangers, I think for me, was a potential banana skin. A lot more so than the draws than game because. They, they've got a good quality team there, they've just not performed this season. The position they're in, obviously, it they looks like they're going to be relegated in all fairness and all probability. But uh, I thought that was our best performance of the season. I thought the pace that we started was absolutely tremendous. The passing uh, was absolutely eloquent and we absolutely battered them. You know, from, from the first minute to the 90th minute, we didn't relinquish. We just carried on going, carried on going. Tom Greaves scoring as he does, as he has been. Tremendous work rate. You talked about Michael Norton's work rate, yeah. but the great thing about that is you've got Norton with the work rate, you've got Tom Reeves that you might not see in the game for about half an hour, but the work he's doing off the ball is tremendous together with the person behind him, which is, is Wolfie. You know, I mean, Wolfie, again, he's probably one of the best players. You want to watch a player that moves off the ball and what he does, have a look at him because he creates a lot of space for the players. But no, I mean, Norton and Greaves, that, that combination, as, as it was alluded to earlier on, you know, the, the fans have been crying out that for a long, long time. And, and uh, you know, due to circumstances, the way we played, it wasn't going to happen, but it's now this new formation and it's paying dividend. Tom Greaves has, you know, 30 goals for the yeah, season. One with each foot, you know, really class. Two of them help each other out. Yeah, yeah. You can really see that. Uh, you just want, really if, if you're a defender, you think, you know, if you yeah. play against one up top, you think, well, we can marshal him and we can push him onto the other defender. You've got two of them there, you haven't got a chance because okay. the pace is that yeah. 10 yards of pace he's got, uh, Tom Greaves. Tremendous. Right. We've got to wrap up pretty quickly because we spent ages going on about Chorley, but I mean, beating Skelmersdale 3 1, let's not talk about the dodgy keeper, but then scoring five at Witten to go top. I mean, do you lads think it's on? Without a shadow of a doubt. Um... It's in their hands. I think that's all you can ask for, you know, to be in a position. If you're a player, you want it to be down to you. And I think now they're at that stage of the season that uh, we wouldn't have thought that. That's only really 19 points off the top at one stage, quite only about eight, ten weeks ago. Uh, I think for them to actually say now that it's in their hands. I think uh, I've got the fixtures in front of me here. I think there's, uh, there's points to be dropped by all sides at the moment. So, uh, but I, I think he'll go right to the very I think, end. I think the way FC United played, I want to just go back very quickly, you know, it wasn't a dodgy keeper, because uh, <laughs> I think Zaki but himself uh, pulled off some miraculous saves in that game to keep Skemmersdale in that game uh, a lot longer uh, than the, they, they thought they would be, because, you know, as an ex FC United goalkeeper. No, himself, no, I'm not knocking him, but, um, you know, the first one went under him and it was a... Well, it went aside of him. Well, it was a miss it, though, wasn't it? it was, oh, yeah, it was you a know, mistake. He, he was... missed the second one for the header on the line, for Charlie's header on the line, and I think so it, it, was... it looked a bit suspect in the third one, to be fair. Well, I mean, you know, you've already seen it in, in replay, in replays, uh, <laughs> uh, in hindsight, you know, if you're there at the game and you're watching it, I mean, he pulled off three or four tremendous saves. And equally, uh, against, because uh, we haven't got much time, um, against uh, Witten Albion, we were poor. We scored five, we won by five goals to two, but I mean, I spoke to Daz uh, after the game and I said that even at half-time when we were commentating that, you know, Carl wouldn't have been happy with that performance because there was too many mistakes made in the first half we scored four tremendous goals and they were tr absolutely outstanding goals um, but there was there was there was think problems in the midfield and they'll, which is great you're winning 5-2 but and you can actually have something to work on and tonight they'll be working that in training because he wasn't happy with quite a lot 
Daz said this. Daz said it, and so did uh, so did Brownie. You know, uh, Dave Brown. That is. Uh, you know, they said there was a lot of things that we can do a lot better, which only goes to show if you're winning by five goals to two and you can improve. You know, Blythe is a big game we got coming up. Oh, uh, Matt Lock yeah. this weekend uh, yeah. the, 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 coming up shortly as well. Um, they are big games, but there's no reason why we can't go on and win this league now. I mean, I was, I always said at the very beginning of the season, um, whoever finishes above Chorley will win this division. 19 points behind, I didn't think it was possible, but what a run. And, you know, it's some great football in between. And even if we have a scrappy win against Blythe, who cares? Because it's all about now staying at the top and making sure that promotion pushes on. Because we don't want, do we? We don't want No, we don't want the playoffs again. Do I, I think it's, it's undoubtedly doable. Uh, and I think the players, the players just need to concentrate. And it is the cliche. It's every single game, as each game as it comes and not worry so much about the next one. Yeah, so you've got the fixtures in front of you in a legible form. Last question, Alan. In five words or fewer, who's going to finish top? Uh, <laughs> I won't say works up looking at that thing. Uh, no, FC United. Yeah, I think we'll win it. Lovely stuff, in five words off Europe. Okay. So there we are then. Bring your own ball. Done and dusted for another month. Join us at the start of May for our end of season. Not doing it through the playoffs again. Surely special, where no matter <laughs> what, there will be lots of jelly and ice cream, and maybe even... A game of Pass the Parcel. Don't forget to watch match highlights over and over and over again, all 15 billion of you, as if it were adult content <laughs> on FCUM.tv. A big thanks to Charlie Raglan, Tom Davis, Kate Ramsey, Neil Boothman, Swampy, and Alan Hargrave for sharing the makeup. And to Kay in Moston, hashtag FCUM action is ongoing in the tweetest possible sense. Oh. Find us <laughs> at FCUMTV. And from everyone here in the studio of noise, Tra and Mind the Tramps. <laughs>